Hello and welcome to this summary of the topics covered in the XCFX Colour Management Workshop for Autodesk Flame. When creating a new project in the current Flame version, the user must specify a colour policy and has the option of copying a policy from an existing project or selecting a preset. There are two groups of presets. Autodesk, which comprises the five factory preset policies installed with Flame, and Shared, which comprises any policy presets exported by the user. The shared group is empty in the case of a newly installed flame system. File locations for the Autodesk and shared colour policy groups are covered at the end of this video. Flame defaults to selecting the legacy policy from the Autodesk group and I'll confirm this selection before launching the project. The legacy colour policy is designed to provide a familiar experience for users of previous versions of Flame. I'll open the Colour Management Preferences page to examine the settings in more detail. The Legacy Colour Policy defines the working colour space and action colour space as unknown, and by default tags all imported media as being in an unknown colour space. The viewing rules in the Legacy Policy are designed to present the user with a familiar range of viewport colour transforms for all major media types – log, linear, video and unknown. I'll begin by importing some media to the desktop. The import menu is the first of several places where I can apply colour management in Flame. I can tag clips as being in any one of a range of colour spaces or convert them to any colour space on import. I'll stick with the default option to tag clips as unknown for now and import the three example frames. The first is in Rec 709. The second has been transcoded to Scene Linear Array Wide Gamut and the third has been transcoded to log C array wide gamut. The default viewport transform defined by the video viewing rule is being applied to all three clips which are tagged as unknown as specified in the viewing rules table. This shows the clips as raw without applying any colour transform in the viewport. To illustrate this I'll rename the viewing rule and we see that its name updates in the viewport. Now I'll delete all of the preset viewing rules leaving only the default rule which displays all clips of any type as raw or untransformed. In order to tag my clips as the current colour space I could import them again and select the correct tagging options. In this case I'm going to edit the colour space of the clips I've already imported by right clicking the clips, selecting edit colour space from the contextual menu, tagging my clips as rec 709, scene linear and log C and applying the changes. Note how the tagged colour space now appears as a label in the clip thumbnail. Now that I've tagged my clips correctly I'll proceed to create some viewing rules to automatically apply the correct viewing transform depending on how the clips are tagged. For clips tagged as Rec 709 no transform is required for a Rec 709 display. So I'll create a Rec 709 viewing rule which displays the clips as raw or untransformed. I'll create a viewing rule for the scene linear clip and browse the supplied ACES viewing transforms. Select the video transform for Rec 709 displays and set scene linear as the allowed colour space for this rule. This will apply an accurate and mathematically reversible transform from scene linear to the Rec 709 display mode. Note that as soon as I apply this rule the thumbnail on the desktop changes to reflect the colour management now being applied to this clip. When I view the clip in the player, I can bypass viewport colour management to disable the linear viewing rule and show the raw clip. Now I'll create a viewing rule for the log C clip and once again select the ACES video transform and set log C as the allowed colour space for this rule. Now the log C viewing rule is applied to the clip tagged as log C. As I select each clip in the player, the appropriate viewing rule is automatically applied based on the clip's tagged colour space, and when I bypass viewport colour management, the clips are shown in their raw state. Now I'll right click the clip thumbnail to export the log C clip and re-import it tagged as unknown so that it's displayed as raw. Note how the exported clip is still log as I didn't apply the viewing rule transform to the export to bake it in. Now I'll export the log C clip again. Open the advanced options menu and select use LUT. 
This allows me to apply colour management to my exports. I'll select the View Transform option, open the editor and apply the Source Tag and Log C viewing rule to my export, thereby baking in the Log C to Rec 709 Transform. Next, I'll splice the three colour managed clips together to create a short sequence and open this in the flame timeline. Note how the view transform updates dynamically based on the source tags and viewing rules as I navigate through the timeline. Now I'll attempt to export the timeline of the three clips using the same export colour management options I selected for exporting the single clip in the previous example. The error message alerts me to the fact that the timeline contains mixed colour spaces and that the export colour space will be fixed at the colour space of the first frame of the timeline, which won't produce the required result. I'll cancel the export and return to the timeline. When I examine the pre-processing settings for each clip and open the colour management page, I can see their source tags and modify them if required. I can also add a colour management soft effect to the timeline segments. I'll add a new track, select it to create a gap track and apply a colour management soft effect. I'll set this to apply the view transform defined by the viewing rules and the source tags to each segment. Now the entire timeline from V2 up is unified to the required Rec 709 colour space. I'll label the clips by adding a new gap track and applying a burn-in effect to print their colour space as read from the source media and the V1 track. Now I'll export the timeline. I'll disable the Use LUT option as I don't want to apply a second pass of colour management on export, as this is already being handled by the colour management soft effect in the timeline. When I re-import the clip and bypass viewport colour management, we can see that the Rec 709 transform was baked in on export. Now we've seen how viewing rules can automatically switch between transforms in the viewport depending on source clips colour space tags. Next we'll take a look at how input rules can automate the colour space tagging of imported clips in Flame. As we saw earlier, clips can be tagged manually on import by selecting from the colour space options in Import Colour Management. If I select the Tag from File or Rules option, Flame will search for metadata in the source media file to define the imported clip's colour space. When File or Rules is selected, the file metadata always takes precedence. In the absence of colour space metadata in the file, as in the case of these two sources, Flame will then use an input rule to tag the imported clips. I happen to know that the DPX sequence of the drummer is log C wide gamut, and that the EXR sequence of the couple on the bridge is scene linear. Before I proceed, I'll disable the viewing rules I created earlier, in order to display any imported clips as raw. Now I'll switch to the Input Rules tab and create input rules for the log and linear clips. I'll use the date string in the file name as the pattern to trigger the input rule for the log clip and the EXR file extension to trigger the input rule for the linear clip. I'll edit the log rule and enter the date string from the file name as a wildcard in the pattern field and select log C as the tagged colour space for imported clips matching the pattern criteria. Now the browser thumbnail shows a preview of the colour space tag to be applied to the clip. Now I'll edit the linear rule and enter the EXR extension in the extension field. Entering alphabetical characters in regex format, as shown here, ensures that the extension will be detected in upper and lower case. I'll select Scene Linear as the tagged colour space for imported clips matching the extension criteria. 
Now the browser thumbnail shows a preview of the color space tag to be applied to the linear clip. Now I'll re-enable the viewing rules I disabled earlier and return to the browser. Note how the log to video and scene linear to video transformed invoked by the viewing rules are now automatically applied. In the player, when I bypass the viewport transforms, both clips are now displayed as raw. Now we've seen how input rules can automate the colour space tagging of imported clips according to user defined criteria, in the absence of colour space metadata in the source file header. Now I'm going to create my own custom transform. I'll return to the viewing rules in colour management preferences and duplicate the viewing rule I created for the log clip. This will provide an additional option in the viewer for clips tagged as log. Now, instead of selecting one of the preset viewing transforms, I'll select the Add New option and browse for a 3D LUT file. The Slash Opt Autodesk Luster Color folder branch contains a number of film print emulation LUTs, and I'll select this Kodak 2383 monitor LUT as my custom transform. This workflow is valid for 1D and 3D LUT formats exported from most third party applications. I'll select Log C as the allowed colour space to trigger the rule and Rec 709 as the allowed display. Now my custom transform appears as an additional view transform option for footage tagged as log. Next we'll take a look at colour management in batch. Monitoring a linear gradient with an RGB waveform enabled in the scopes provides a graphical approach to visualising colour transforms as shown here with a colour correction node. Dedicated colour management nodes may be inserted anywhere in the batch schematic. I'll insert one here and select a linear to log input transform. The trace on the waveform monitor enables us to visualise this. Now I'll branch off and insert another colour management node. This time I'll select the Use LUT option and browse for a LUT. Once again we can visualise how each channel is affected in the scopes view. In the next scenario I'll build a simple composite in batch. As a rule, all compositing operations should be performed in scene linear. So I'll set my project working colour space to ACES CG, which is scene linear with the AP1 primaries. I'll import a CG foreground element rendered to ACES CG with alpha. I modified the input rule I wrote earlier to automate the ACES CG colour space tagging and a viewing rule handles the linear to video transform in the viewport. Now I'll import my background plate with the tag from file or rules option enabled. There's colour space metadata in the QuickTime file so this is used to tag the imported clip as log C. I'll add a comp node and connect the front and matte inputs for the foreground and the background plate to the back input. The background clip is log, so it'll need to be linearised to match the foreground clip. Clip nodes and read nodes also have a colour management option in batch, so I'll open this and select the input transform from log C, as defined by its metadata, to the project's working colour space, ACES CG. Now my foreground and background elements are linear, and can be composited correctly in the ACES CG working colour space. As the resolve system performing the grade upstream is expecting a log input as per the original background plate, I must now re-log the finished comp in order that the colorist can replace the background plate with the comp without any colour shift. I'll add a right node to my schematic, enable input transform as the colour management mode, and select log C as the target colour space. When I unbypass viewport colour management, the viewing rules come back into play, and the linearised comp and re-logged right node results are correctly transformed to video in the viewport. I'll double check the output transform by duplicating my original background plate, disabling the linearised colour management setting to view it as raw, and toggle back to the re-logged composite output. Now I'll move over to Resolve where the grade is being applied to the original background plate. When I replace the background plate with the finished comp in the editing page, there's no colour shift, as we should expect.
Finally, a quick word about colour policy file locations. The five preset colour policies installed with Flame may be found in the current Flame version installation folder slash colour management slash policies and consists of three files. First, the policy config file, which sets the default working colour space and action colour space. Second, the SynColor File Rules XML file, which contains all input rules for the policy. Thirdly, the SynColor Viewing Rules XML file, which contains the viewing rules for the policy. Colour policies in Flame may be customised or created from scratch and then exported for use on multiple Flame hosts, ensuring consistent results facility-wide. Here I've chosen to export my colour policy from the current project to share with other Flame users. The target shared folder for exported policies may be specified in the Flame setup utility. By default, the shared policy folder is slash applications, autodesk, synergy, syn colour, shared policies. When I browse this folder, I see the policy I exported earlier, along with any additional user colour transforms I created. Thanks for watching. This has been a condensed summary of the topics covered at the XTFX Colour Management Workshops. For more detail, check our support page or contact us to arrange bespoke training or a consultation by our colour science team.